Hold on to your butts. These are the Squashbuckler Diaries. Welcome back. You are listening to the Squash Buckley Diaries, the diary of Joy Shelley's life in the dream, step by step, brick by brick. We're building up the life of a future heroine in the dream, raised by a father who is there only when he sleeps and they go on adventures because that's what he dreams about. But, and this is where we get to today, what happens when the father wakes up in the middle of an adventure and doesn't finish the dream. That leaves his little girl with villains, and she's small. So let's see what happens. Squash Buckler Diary 11, The Ice Pirates Glacier. Joy's age, five and a half, told by the Red Dragon. It was not a good day for Joy, my dragon little. She had not slept well that night, and once Dragonfather appeared on the deck of Bunny's Revenge, the ice pirates immediately struck. The battle was hard, long, and mostly tiring. The ice pirates had defeated Dragon Little and Dragonfather. They abandoned them at the top of a glacier and taken Bunny's Revenge to their stronghold. Dragonfather knew that the ice pirate's stronghold was atop the glacier, a five-mile climb on top of a freezing glacier with no protection. Dragon Little was already exhausted. Come on, Dragonfather said. You can do it. Come on. The walk up was hard and slow. In the middle, Dragon Little began shaking from the cold. Dragonfather, without noticing he did so, summoned a coat for her, warmer pants and boots. He convinced her that wearing them will make her warmer. He convinced her that wearing them will make her warmer. After she dressed, they continued the climb. There is no other way, Joey told her. Bunny's revenge is up there. We have to get to it. We have to defeat the ice pirates. Dragon Little pushed on and on. Soon she sat on the ice and said, I can't, Dad, I can't. Come on, come on, I'll push you. It'll help. She shook her head. It's too hard. Please, Joey, come on, we have to do it. The jetpack, Dad, can you just fly us out of here? Whenever he needed it, a jetpack would appear on Dragonfather's back, helping him fly when he needed it. I don't know, he concentrated, but nothing happened. Come on, he tried to will it to his back. Come on, come on, come on. Still, nothing happened. He closed his eyes and tried again. The jetpack appeared on his back. There we go, he smiled and Joy jumped up. But within a second, he and his jetpack had disappeared. He had woken up and returned to the waking world. Dragon Little sat down. Her father often disappears in the middle of something and then returns after a few minutes to the deck of Bunny's Revenge. Dragon Little looked up at the sky, waiting for Bunny's Revenge to appear and for her father to pick her up. But half an hour passed and it did not appear. Dragon Little made a face. This was one of those times it would take him hours to return. Dragon Little began to cry. I felt for her. My heart broke for her. I could have flown to her and helped her. But I knew what she and her father didn't. Too many things were waiting for her on the outside of her father's dream. She had to become tough, truly tough to survive at least part of her childhood. I waited and watched. Dragon Little cried for five minutes. Then she wiped away the tears and came to her feet. Step by step, second by second, she moved up the glacier. Minute by minute, keeping the same exact slow pace, she moved forward. She kept her head down, looking at the ground in front of her. Her teeth were clenched as she walked, until she reached the top. It took her two hours after her father had disappeared, but she made it. She looked at the unimpressive stronghold from the outside and spotted her ship parked outside, floating in the air, tied to the stronghold, without anyone guarding it. She snuck into the ship, went to the helm, and began flying upwards and away. The rope tying the ship to the stronghold did not break. For a moment, Bunny's revenge hung in the air, not moving. The ice pirates looked at the ship. 
Dragon Nettle pushed the wheel back hard to increase speed. The rope did not break, but the stronghold did. It was torn away from the glacier as the ship flew up. Dragon Nettle looked back and saw she was carrying the entire stronghold. She swung Bunny's revenge down and slammed the stronghold into the glacier. It broke apart and all the ice pirates fell. Now, carrying only the rope behind her, she flew the ship into a cloud. She parked inside it, went into her cabin, and went to sleep. Told by the Red Dragon. Hashtags Joy, Justin, the Red Dragon, Ice Pirates. So, Guy here again, and I think this shows you who she is, and I think it will not surprise you that Joy will turn out to be a great heroine. And this is how she was created. Uh, something very similar to me happened. My father, it's not that my father disappeared and woke up in the middle of an adventure, but uh, uh, um, my father and I, uh, when I was a teenager, he, we went, he, he did this on purpose. We went on a big trek and basically like the halfway point was where I broke. Uh, and he did, he, and you know, I just, I, couldn't go on and then you know i stopped and i cried because we you had to walk all the way back and then i uh i got up and we walked back and from that point on i i i i, I just knew i could do anything you know if you walk you keep you keep at it and you can do it and that's it uh so i think that is how joy is built and now the credits. The Squash Buckler Diaries are written and read by me, Guy Hassan. If you want to know more about the Squash Buckler Diaries, check out the website, guyhasson.com, which is G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N.com. The theme music is called Brash Gentleman and is by Thomas Herodek. I will talk to you again tomorrow in the dream. <coughs> ah okay, sorry about that. She snuck into the ship, went to the help. It says went to the help, went to the help, went to the helm. Now, carrying only the rope behind her, she flew the ship into a clown. A clown? <laughs> she flew the ship into a clown. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was fun. She was being a hero.